As soon as we started telling our viewers about this story related to this cemetery, the owner called us. He was not happy with the interview that we had already gotten with him and had asked for another opportunity to give his side of the story. We of course said yes and agreed to meet him this morning at 945 here at his office. Well, we were here, but he wasn't. We tried calling Mr. Ray and hi, this is Jennifer Waugh from left messages. Turns out he called the station to tell us he had to reschedule because he had been called away. He had to remove a body for a burial. So he agreed to meet us at one o'clock. We came back and again, he wasn't here. And again, we called. I want to give you every opportunity, obviously, to give your side of this story. And again, there was no answer, and we called two different numbers. These are the same kind of complaints that we have been receiving about this cemetery and about the owner. In fact, we spoke with one family who says they were on their way here to bury their loved one, and when they pulled in with the funeral procession, the gate was locked. What should have been a peaceful goodbye to Johnny Mae Jones turned into a fiasco for her family. Her grave had not been dug when they arrived at the cemetery in Atlantic Beach. We've never in my life have encountered anything like this. Celestine Jones says John Ray, an owner of Beaches Memorial Park, greeted them, delivering surprising news. It had rained so much that the ground was too wet and that she would have to be buried in stages. So now, father-in-law, married for 62 years, has to come back again to relive his wife's death. Who wants to do that? The family insisted the burial happen right then. As the bulldozer started digging, they couldn't believe what they saw. This ground is not wet. Jones shot this video on her cell phone. This is the dirt. Now this is what he was saying where it was, it was wet. And as you can see, this dirt is dry. It's very, very dry. Now the family was suspicious, so they insisted on seeing the vault they bought to bury their 77-year-old mother's casket inside. This vault has cracks in it. It's not what, what we ordered. It's supposed to be a sealed vault. This is an unsealed vault because he has holes in the, in the bottom of it. Do you think that he would have buried then your mom in a broken vault that Absolutely. wouldn't have even been sealed correctly? Absolutely. Jones and her husband say they think the cemetery owner was trying to rip off their family by using a damaged and chipped vault instead of buying a new one and made up the story about wet ground to get rid of the family. How much money are we talking about did this cost, roughly? It's either 52 to $5,500, because initially the price was 48. But by the time it got there to actually pay him, he increased the price more. And Going on and on about this closed vault that needed to be paid for. A vault they say that didn't even have a lid to seal it. This is where we are now, two hours and a half after the service. It's unacceptable. The family called police, and the owner finally agreed to entomb Johnny Mae Jones in the mausoleum. But it took more than five hours. They say a worker had to go to the hardware store to get the materials needed to do it. Her husband, so overcome with emotion, couldn't even stay and missed his final goodbye. As I was telling him, I said, do you understand that you have to have some type of humility, some type of grace when it comes to dealing with people, family, and their loved ones. And what did he say? How did he respond to you saying that to him? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's basically what he no said. No apology? No, not once. No sensitivity? Not a small bit. Horrific. If I had one word to sum it up, it would be horrific. Pastor Eric Jackson says his family never received an apology either. <laughs> when we get there at 1230, Nothing is prepared. They're racing around. The gate is latched when we get there. His Aunt Lily Bell's burial also had been scheduled and paid for days in advance. We had a copy of the contract with us, um, you know, because it's clear as day. He wrote 1230. He gave no excuse. Only thing he wanted us to do was put our mobile devices up and stop recording um, the actions that were going on. It gets worse. And as they were letting the casket down, he did not seal the casket and the casket was coming open. And we kept sharing with him, you know, hey, John, the casket is coming open. He was assuring us that it was not coming open. Look closely. You can see right there in the middle of the casket, it is clearly open. My concern, you know, at that point is 
had we not been there, would you have just dumped my relative in this vault, pulled out this casket, and used it on another one of your own services? It's why Jackson insisted on staying until the bitter end, stunned again by what he noticed next. It's 18 years of being around the funeral industry. I've never seen them pull dirt out of a hole and throw it on top of someone else's grave next to it. Their flowers, the vases, I've never seen that before. They would normally take this um, dirt, put it in a backhoe or whatever, place it in another part of the cemetery. You can see flowers marking another person's grave buried under the dirt. And that family, had they come out to see their loved one that afternoon, they would have been pretty upset. To add insult to injury, Jackson says his family paid the cemetery to add the date of his aunt's death to her grave marker. I went out the other day on Monday to take a picture to see if it had been done, and it still was not done a year later. No. I'm Jennifer Wall with Channel 4. We went to get some answers last Friday from John Rayan, owner of Beaches Memorial Park. There are people who say that you have been very unprofessional and unethical in the way that you've handled their funerals and their burials. Is there anything you have to say about that? No, I haven't. Been. We followed him as he kept walking away, asking him about the Jones and Jackson burials. Sir, do you have anything to say to these families? I mean, they're traumatized. Are you even apologetic? You are? Well, now's your opportunity to, to apologize. Um, I'm not going to be filmed. You don't have anything to say to these families? Yes, but I'm not going to be bombarded like that. It's very rude. State investigators have been here to inspect just this week. What happened? They were here two days ago. You have no idea they were here? I didn't speak with her. Why didn't you speak with her? Because it's not my department. How do you explain this, though? You've had a number of complaints. You're not going to do an interview. Please leave. Thank you.